house was built about 1910. We remodeled uh, the stairway and put in the glass bricks and uh, been living here for about 25 years. Maybe more. Okay, these are the paintings of the, my blue women. Uh, I did them last summer in the uh, heat of the summer, and uh, I decided that I was gonna do them in monochrome and blue. So I did about 20 of them at the same time, and on one of them, when I was working on them, I started to um, put some red in it, and I started feeling sick, 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 and I decided that I was gonna keep them all blue, blue, blue. And, and this one. This figure right here is kind of like doing Tai Chi. You know, he's up there with the, with the paintbrush, he's going like that, and he's painting at the same time, and figure. To me, that's what that turns me on with all, all these uh, uh, blue women. They, they kind of stand by themselves as perfectly balanced figures. The circular shape actually in a Mayan language stands for the cosmos. So the motions that I got with the stylization uh, really turned me on. I put the halo on this one and I put the wings more than anything is because I like the shapes and the composition. You know, now this one over here has nice shapes and composition as well, but I don't have the halo and I don't have the wings. But as you can see, what I have the most detail in and expression in is in the, is in the face and in the eyes. Well, actually, this one's called Layla's Dream. I, I did this uh, artwork, and in the morning, when my daughter Layla saw it, she said, Dad, you know, I had a dream about that exact uh, creature. She said that it had wings and it had uh, plants growing out of its head. And so I, I named it Layla's Dream. And this one, I turned it into sort of like an ocean of, uh, of design. I don't think people really knew what to think about when, they, when I had this exhibit because they were so used to me being so colorful. I enjoyed doing them. It, it made me feel cool. The pictures are very cool. This is my kitchen, down here, downstairs in the kitchen. We designed all this. We bought this house ooh, about 1970 and uh, remodeled the whole thing. Oh, this is a painting that I did eight or nine years ago. When I did this series, I, I painted the whole canvas black first. I was sort of in my uh, dark period. Practically every square inch of this house has got paintings. And I have this thing that I don't like to see them stacked up, you know, uh, where you can't, they can't breathe or they can't see. And this is a Manuela Costa right here. This one, that's a print, signed print. This one over here is a Tom Lee drawing. My mountains. Some of my private collection. This is your bedroom. Yeah, so it's my bedroom, it's my studio, it's uh, everything. I could uh, walk over here to the other corner over here and I'll show you um, my work area and also uh, 
Did we just walk through a wall? Yeah, we walked through a wall. These are uh, my most recent uh, works. And what I'm doing is um, uh, working on these uh, women who are at a, a, a coffee table in a cafe. And uh, I'm, I'm uh, doing a very uh, kind of a stylized uh, uh, approach. I'm working in acrylics. And uh, so I've been uh, doing some of these drawings. When it's time to party, this is the place. Okay, well this is my backyard. And this is all the mosaic work. Tile it was all inspired by Antonio Gaudi from Barcelona, Spain. The way we do the backyard is he would just have parties and um, all of his friends would just grab a section and just um, start tiling in. And oh, I remember they used to still mind all my dolls to like stick in like the walls and the ground and they would take all my toys and I'd get so mad. I have a fountain over there. The gazebo. And uh, so it's where my dog lives, Ryo. Well, this is kind of a refuge. We've had a lot of parties back here. We've had friends get married in there. We've made, made a lot of music back here. You can see some of the influences of Manuel Acosta, Tom Lee, Eugene Thurston, who are really some of our local great masters. The elements of their work reflecting in-house. Hal Marcus has been such a broad-minded individual that he embraces world culture, which is really, um, I, I find that to be a very fascinating component of Hal Marcus's character. Hal Marcus has been in a position to create a niche for himself. He is truly, in my opinion, enamored of El Paso, the mountains. So he became conversant with the Mexican culture. And it, it forms very much a part of his own inner culture. We could say that Hal Marcus's work is akin to the work of Norman Rockwell. He has encompassed the Mexican culture, the Jewish culture, the culture of the 60s and some of his work here, and the, the future. Very interesting, very enigmatic character is Hal Marcus. Well, I guess I was a, I was a hippie, but uh, you know they said, how could you make a living being a hippie?